What? I'm just reading. Look, man. My family aren't here. I'm all by myself. I'm enjoying some peace and quiet. Can I just read my issue of Heavy Metal with Julie Strain modeled as Fack from Son of Beasley? No. I'm going to do it anyway. You really want me to talk about it? I got to talk about this right now. We're doing this. Okay, fine. Let's go do it. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. Are you ready? There you go, one take. Okay, everybody, you want to hear it? We're going to do it. We're going to talk about Paolo Serpieri's Druna, which uh, one of his stories is found here in September 1997 of Heavy Metal. So that is the main event, the Druna story. Uh, but we are going to talk a little bit about some of the other stuff. And let me just make sure my lighting does not mess everything up. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's go over there. Okay. Um, thank you all for joining me today. Okay. Let's do this, mofo. Um, huge fan of Simon Beasley, and I really want to do a Beasley retrospective sometime soon. Because um, <clears throat> definitely back in the day, Beasley was like my, my guy. More than Jim Lee or McFarlane or any of those guys. Beasley was my guy, and um, I loved his painting. I loved uh, the work he did on Lobo. Lobo is really what really got me, so I'm a big fan, so we need to talk about that. Um, this is 97, so Kevin Eastman is the um, editor-in-chief, so it's that era. And again, I've said before that nine, in the 90s is not the best, um, <clears throat> but there's some good stuff in here, so, so how about them apples? And we're gonna just gloss over some of the trash. So the trashy stuff we'll gloss over. But I do wanna kinda like, uh, before we hit the main event, let's do kind of the, the opening card here. And let's talk a little bit about some of Beasley's work. Um, this shows some galleries, some kind of images uh, of his work in relation to this new movie they're trying to bust out called Fact 2. Kevin Eastman created this character based on his wife, Julie Strain, who was a, a model and actress at the time. And um, so they started building out this like sci-fi kind of epic story. And Beasley, who's a good friend of Kevin's, did all, all these illustrations. And so this really gets, you get a chance to see Beasley be an illustrator. And let me say this for the record, and let me just write this down on a piece of paper too, because I think this is important following okay um, the following is this comic artists are illustrators okay but not all illustrators are comic artists okay what do I mean by that? Well, just that. If you can do comics, by doing comic books, you're an illustrator because you're illustrating images, pay, you know, and each of those turns it are panels and they become pages and that kind of stuff. But if you're just doing illustration, you know, you might know, you know, storytelling as far as a composition, but you don't know storytelling how a sequence of images becomes a story. So that's not the same. But I'll tell you this. Uh, Beasley is both, right? He's a comic artist, and right, right now we're kind of seeing his illustration chops. So, um, so, and I love it. And, and this video doesn't do it justice. You really kind of get, got to get in these things. Um, but big fan of it. You know, and now that I look at it again, and it, what was the image I was looking at? It was this. I'm really seeing Richard Corbin in his work. Just looking at this, sometimes the simplified things as well as the detailed, I kind of feel, 
and and the volume the form the way he paints form the shadowing and stuff um i'm really kind of feeling like he's got some corbin uh influence let me know what you think i'm curious am i i'm on crack great stuff though i mean i just i feel he takes he takes, you know, Corbin, Frazetta, all these guys, and he brings it to this more hyper, violent, sexualized, grotesque format. But it's pretty damn well done. I mean, just look at the background of her. Despite her, you might be grotesqued out by her, but just look at the background. Look at some of the, the work that he's doing here. It's really well done. It, it really does border on some of the fine art stuff. That's my opinion, of course. People might say other things, but I think Beasley is the real deal. Um, you know, some of these backgrounds uh, are so damn good. It's, you know, Frazetta would be, would be like, okay, I get it, you know. It, almost a Bob Peak. There's a looseness to it. There's a gesturalness to it. Okay, I'm a big fan. Uh, we're gonna skip the soft core stuff. This is just Julie images, right? No big, not really art of comics worthy discussion. Again, selling all the cruddy stuff. But you know what? Here's something that's interesting. I saw this Dracula Symphony of Moonlight and Nightmares by John Muth. John Muth, wonderful, beautiful watercolor artist who did Moonshadow with. Uh, Dematis, Jim Dematis, uh, great work. I don't have this, but now I kind of want to find it because I'm a big fan of John Muth, so I'm gonna have to check that out. Here's a, a rank story. <clears throat> These rank stories have been going on for years and years. Um, I really like his work, but I want to get into Druna, so we're just gonna flip through it, but <clears throat> I really dig his, um, the colors and the painting he does on the over the line work. I really like the modeling of the flesh and skin. <clears throat> it's really good stuff. Um, and I don't know this artist's history. I should look it up. And when we talk about him in more detail, we definitely will do that. But he's got a great sense of color and, uh, and good anatomy too. He's, he's one of the real deals. Okay, uh, some merch. Okay, here we go. Aphrodisia. This is called Aphrodisia. This is one of the Druna stories by Paolo uh, Serpietti. Is that Serpi? I said that wrong. Hang on. Serpieri. Serpieri. Paolo Serpieri was born in uh, Venice, Italian. Moved to Rome as a, a youngster. He studied architecture and painting, similar to Milo Manera actually, did the same thing. Uh, he's still alive, he's 76, 44, was born in uh, 1944. He, uh, so it's around the same age as Milo Manera actually. Um, he's called the master of, a of the ass, he, which we're gonna see a lot of that today. Um, he started out doing kind of westerns, of course, Old West, uh, America West, man, the Italians love that stuff. He started doing that, and then in 85, he drew the first uh, kind of short story of Druna that became so popular, he kind of continued that and did a number of short stories. And this is a story that's, I don't know, this is maybe like 50 pages or so um, that we're gonna go through today. And two things I love about this artist. One is the colors. I love that he's using two colors, blue and um, like an orange. I love that. So the colors, the way he's watercoloring it is really kind of um, enticing to me. I like that. The other thing is his hatching, cross-hatching, modeling, showing form, especially the human body, is unparalleled. He's one of the guys that you look to as far as like, if you wanna learn like hatching, cross hatching, if you wanna draw the body like in that way, 
uh, from an anatomy perspective or just kind of like really getting form of the figure, study this guy because he knows how to do it. So those are the two like elements that really strike out to me uh, with his art. The story itself is a little uh, convoluted, and to be honest, some of these uh, these foreign uh, or European stories for me as American are hard to like decipher. And I don't know if it's like an issue of translation or what, but I have a hard time like understanding what the freak is going on sometimes. So. We're just gonna start off where there's this character called Will. He's some sort of lieutenant, kind of a fighter pilot or something, and he's walking off in the desert. This is a great opening. It is great. This looks like Arrakis or someplace. Um, oh, that's not a stem suit. <laughs> he's walking around. He's trying to figure out what's going on. He doesn't know what's happening. Um, beautiful places. And then this creature comes out of the ground and he doesn't know what this thing is, and he calls it an antidote. He's talking about antidotes and antibodies, and somehow we get this, like, and then it just, it comes out of the ground, like ready to attack, and then it kind of like starts dying and then decomposing, and it's like partly um, organic, partly metallic and robotic, and, and he goes inside to investigate, doesn't know, really know what it is, and just starts dissolving into the ground. And he's in some sort of a dream world. He doesn't understand it. He's uh, some kind of a telepathic place. He, maybe he's delirious. He doesn't know what's going on. He's he sit down, and he's thinking about Druna, this woman he knows. Um, and he's, so he's like, thinking about Druna, and he's hearing this, these sounds. And he go, he, somehow he's in this little... Uh, opening to a, a building or a wall of some sort, and he sees Druna. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to make a note of these positionings of the words. I thought that's the way it was. But someone on the comments on another video said that Heavy Metal, aka Kevin Eastman, editorial staff, put these word balloons covering the most explicit elements. And let me stop right here and say this will be not safe for work. This will have some mature themes and nudity. So stop right now, pause this, hit the like button, and bounce out if that's an issue. Because because Superieri is going to go into this, so this is a little little more mature, okay? So just so you know that. If that triggers you, uh, I'd love to have you have a great one. Okay, now. Uh, Americans, I guess, with heavy metal, they did kind of block that out. And I'm fine with that. I don't need to see insertion. I don't need to see copulation on the freaking comic. So I'm cool with it. But someone said in the comments on one of those Milo Monero videos I did that uh, the Italian original does not have that. So maybe they put that over there. I don't know. Can't say to that. But uh, anyway, these guys are like raping her or having sex. We can't really tell that if it's rape or not. It seems like maybe it is, it's not, I don't know. But there are these weird little dudes that are <clears throat> doing this. Uh, there's a weird kind of hermaphroditic person that's doing this. And um, it's a little, it's a little odd. It's a little kind of uh, horrific, right? And he's like getting turned on and he can't look away. And, and there's this creature coming out, right? And, and um, so let's just like talk about the figure and the form and just seeing how he's overlaying these, these hatch marks around the body to show the form of the arms, you know, uh, to show the form of the breasts is just really good. I mean, it's like, He's doing it really well. And I would assume he's probably not using models for all this. He's not like t doing photography. This is just him like composing this. Um, and then he's really good at horror and he's good at the detail of these kind of creatures and these kind of, you know, the sinewy. He knows anatomy. You can tell he knows the skeletal structures, the bone, the sinews and ligaments of the of the of the body so that he kind of like wakes up out of this dream 
And then we go, look at these blues. I love these blues with a little bit of like gray and, and brown underneath. They're kind of like layered watercolors. And look how nice and rich this is. This is multiple layers of watercolor. And then I don't know if he's using a sponge. He's using something to put some nice texture right there to kind of, and it could be a sponge. I don't know. I'm doing some guesswork. But this is a great, great uh, tower here. It's all the kind of decay that he does. Um, the coloring reminds me too of like um, Jimenez, Jose Jimenez's stuff. Um, another guy that, uh, the Meta Barons, where is it? Do I have it? I don't have it right off my bat. But uh, the Meta Baron stuff with Hodorowski, what kind of reminds me a little bit of that, the coloring. So he meets this robot. Robot tells him, hey, go in this tower. It doesn't really, he's still, it's really confusing what the hell's going on. But now these antibody monster things are coming back out of the ground. He runs away. This is great, great action here. Great perspective with the horizon line at the bottom coming through. These monsters coming like that. Really cool stuff. He gets scratched up, but he gets through the gate. And so he's kind of safe in the shadows here. Cool grotesquery there. And now inside this tower, it's this kind of weird, horrific, almost a uh, Geiger, H.R. Geiger type of, uh, you know, form, uh, wall like of bodies in, in mid copulation and, and perversions. And then, uh, but look at this. Look at these. Look how great this is. This face. Look how. how the hatch marks is modeled his his skin, his cheekbones, his neck, the anatomy. I mean, this is great. This would be good for like master study stuff, like to like reproduce this to learn, um, you know, and also good on the the folds of the the jacket, you know, the trench coat and the faces. Really, again, faces, and then we got the master of the ass. We're gonna see a lot of this, but. Just the way he draws the buttocks and the glutes and and the dimples there is just really really well done. I mean, it looks great. And the coloring too. This he put a little key light there, uh, or maybe that's a rim light right there. So he meets this kind of specter of uh, Shastar, who's this character who I guess has a relationship with Druna in the real world, but they're in this still. They're in this kind of ethereal dream. This is wonderful. This is great. I mean, despite the content, if you're like, I don't really like this content, but you have to say, if you take this panel out and just look at this, and you look at the level of dimension, the form, the uh, perspective, the uh, depth is the word I was looking for, the depth of the layers. There's an arm, there's another arm, there's a leg, there's another arm in front, there's another now another arm in front is another arm. I mean, there's like five or six layers of body parts and things coming out. And they all are really well done. This is, um, this is what makes him really incredible. So again, someone just, I would even say pound for pound anatomy wise, he's potentially has more of a classical style like an Italian classical style than say like a Mobius, right? Or or, uh, or or even like a Milo Monera. Both of them, of course, know anatomy. Milo knows anatomy really well, but he's got much more of a almost Renaissance kind of classical style, which uh, is brilliant. So then we come back into the real world, I guess. And then uh, he, uh, William is talking to this other character. We don't know his name, but they're kind of like, trying to figure out what's going on. And there's this image, these, this writing. And they're trying to figure it out. And he's like, I'm gonna go back in the dream world. And I'm gonna try to figure out what this is and try to get Druna. Again, it's a little confusing. I don't know what the hell's happening. And now we get to Druna, like straight up. She's at the ocean, she's at the beach, she's beautiful. She's like, you know, this is all kind of tantalizing. We got her buttocks there. Her back, great back arc. And then, but look at this, don't even look at her. Just look at this and look how nice this is and really well done and illustrated. And you know, you could put this in a, 
you know, in your grandma's kitchen, you know what I mean? It's a uh, really well done. Okay, it's not just about the figure, although clearly it's heavy metal. And so she's like in this dream too, perhaps. We don't really understand it. And there's this older stud dude watching over her and she's like, oh, I'm feeling kind of horny and randy. And who's this dude who's coming up and uh, what's he got in that big old thong? And I'm liking that and her eyes are wide and she starts groping him and he's like, checking it out and then then we go to town and so now we have some eroticism and then and we we're drawing the whole caboodle here so they're getting it on we don't need to go into all that necessarily and there's this voyeurism thing here going which i don't get but again just as far as shapes really great great stuff but different positions i mean this is just eroticism here uh, the hair is brilliant. Just this uh, really great way to, to draw the hair. And all these little strands coming out. Okay, I'm going to keep going. This is a Eduardo Rizzo's story, which is actually, I love his stuff. I'm not caring for the coloring job, but early computer days, I suppose. Uh, so we're going to skip over that, although we should talk about it at some point. I have no idea what this is gonna skip it we're gonna skip it we're gonna skip it okay we're back and we're back um though so those characters kind of like crumble now she's in this hellscape which is again brilliantly drawn um actually very phallic looking um so she climbs up this old temple oh, she's about to fall out and then someone helps her up this gal and who is it what it's her it's like a clone or a twin or something the real one or who's the real one which is the dream one which is the real so they kind of like try to figure that out now inside the blue lighting again um just really great stuff Geigery, you know, kind of, but look at this, look at these like tortured statue like figures. This is like the temple of hell. These are these temples of hell and these chambers of people's demons and, and fantasies and perversions all mixed up together in this hellscape. And she's in there, she's trapped in there. And this clone of hers or this other projection of hers is trying to trap her, trick her. And Paula is some friend of hers, at least in the dream world. We don't really know much about her, but now they're prostitutes or they're whores or somehow they're sex slaves. And so we're gonna get into another couple pages of kind of eroticism. Again, not a lot of explanation there. But then the, the clone kind of wakes up, or is it the clone or the dream one? We don't know. But this reminds me of Alien. This right here, is Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> this is the alien. This is like, and this was done after that. So there could be some influence there, but this reminds me a lot of Sigourney Weaver. This looks a lot of like that kind of technology and it's really well done, really well done. Uh, and now she goes through these video logs and she sees like the, the, the uh, other members of the team talk about how they're gonna have to destroy the ship and it's all over. They weren't able to find the antidote for the the, the disease. I don't think it's COVID-19, but it's something or other. And um, that's it. She's like, oh, there she is. That's the real one. I'm the projection. And so um, this is kind of confusing. I guess we, we go back to the other one who was inside the dreamland in the hyperspace dream. And then she goes out. That's a beautiful image there. And then we end with uh, Shastar, who is, I guess, a, in another, they must have some connection in other volumes. And then he's like, I'll always love you. And, and I'm gone now, but I'll always love you. And she's like, I'm sad. And then hopefully things will be okay. And, and so <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I'll think about it tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Um... I thought this was, the story is like, fine. It's a little confusing, actually. 
But just like draftsmanship, I would like this stuff. I, I'm a fan of the art and the amount of work that goes into, you know, coming up with this stuff. So, so that's my take on Serpieri. I'm gonna do more of his stuff. I would love to get his Westerns. I think that would be awesome. Um, Cause I'm a Western fan. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all being safe and happy and uh, you know, subscribe to the channel and all that stuff. And we'll have some more videos coming up soon. Thanks a lot guys. I appreciate it. Have a great one.